For a time, we tried to contact him by radio, but no response. Welcome to this special bonus edition of Bell to Bell this week. Steve and I kept the mic recording as we had a lot more to discuss the other day, so let's not waste any more time and dive right back in. This week, uh, PWI put out their women's 100 list. Um, the top five was all WWE women. Uh, we had Bailey in the number one spot, Becky, and then Charlotte, Asuka, and then Sasha. Yeah. Um, they did end up releasing, you know, like the top 20, uh, but... Yeah, the, the top five being all WWE, I mean, not really surprised, but definitely an interesting thing to see. So I think on their breakdown, they said that it, it's not January through now, it's October 2019 through September September 2020. So like when I saw Becky, I'm like, well, she's been out pregnant since WrestleMania. Mm. But then if you go back to October through Mania, like, okay, I can see why... Yeah. She would be, and Becky was the number one last year. Right, so I can I can I can see that based on their criteria. Okay. It, it is interesting that they're so WWE top heavy. Um, yeah, I actually expected um, Sheeta was at what six? I seven? think so. Yeah, she she made the top ten. I thought she would have cracked top five. No, yeah. um, Bailey and Sasha have had a year of years, so I completely agree with them being in the top mm -hmm. five. Charlotte's been out. A lot of the year. Since when? Mania? Yeah, and then Money she in was the in out before that, too. Was, was, she out, was she been out since Money in the Bank? That sounds about right. So if you're going from October last year till now, like, okay, um, I don't know. That's just, that's just odd to me that you, you know, that you have that. Um, so, like... You said top five, right? Yeah. Just some of the other names to highlight this list. Um, she did six, Tessa Blanchard at seven, Rio at eight, Io Shirai at nine, Rhea Ripley 11, Jordan Grace 12, Shannon Baszler 13, Thunder Rosa 14, Nyla Rose 16, Tyra Valkyrie 17, Kaylee Ray and Kylie Ray come back to back at 18 and 19. And then Nikki Cross rounds out the top 20. Um, so, I mean, no Alexa Bliss in the top 20, um, which is a little odd. But she hasn't really wrestled a whole lot. I think she was tag was, – her and Nikki were tag champs, I think, this year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this year her focus has really been, you know, her talk show and now – Jordan, Jordan Grace could have been higher, I think, given the year that she's had with Impact – um, Tessa's a, an interesting one there at seven. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Tessa's been gone for most of, of 2020, but, you know, that was only due to COVID, so I can't rule that out for that to hurt her, but so she, she had been the first female world champion of an organization here, so. Right, like, to me, if you're being pushed and you, and you win the the heavyweight championship of whatever promotion, mm -hmm. you're the first woman to win the heavyweight championship. Um, and I'm looking at you on this list. Seven's a little low. I have a, a feeling of why she's it's not higher. Probably all the off the field stuff that she has. A little bit of that. Um, so a couple of years ago, PWI, they used to actually rank all the world championships. Okay, so, so like, because it's an impact championship, that's yes. why. Um, because it used to be, you know, it was WWE, you know, and then it was WWE and the World Heavyweight Championship. And so, so now they only they only consider the WWE Championship their the World Championship. That's the top title. Well, then that TNA goes against, used to be. But if you're doing that, 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 that completely goes against what their what their criteria is. So their criteria for this list was championships won. Quality of opposition, technical proficiency, win-loss records, overall activity, 
a momentum slash promotional push. So, so I would say the win loss record and the overall momentum, you know, could have hurt her because of her being gone for so much. Okay, then why isn't she to hire? Yeah. Shia, Sheeta has been on this entire time. I, and she's been the way She's what, 15 and 2? Something like that. And she's. 17 and 2? She, Sheeta's been the 8 And she's been pushed. Division. Like, if you're taking that, if, if that's your criteria, she, she won the AEW championship. Mm-hmm. So, what, because the promotion's only a year old, you're not going to you're not gonna rate that as high as the WWE yeah. Women's Championship? Quality of opposition, okay, that could knock Sheeta down a little bit, given the AEW. But she beat Nyla Rose. Her matches with Thunder Rosa, um, you know, she's beating everybody. Mm-hmm. Technical proficiency, she's one of the best workers in the business, wise. Her win loss record, we already said. Her overall activity, she's been there since day one, this entire year. And then momentum and push, she got the belt and hasn't mm-hmm. lost it. Yeah. So yeah. why is she? Why is she as low as she is? It, it's one of the downsides. When you compare, when less. you compare her to Becky and Charlotte, okay, if we're just going strictly off of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going strictly off of those six criteria, right? Mm. Strictly off of that. Why isn't she higher on this list? She should be above Becky and Charlotte if you're going off of she this list. She should be, but I think probably because Becky and Charlotte are better household names than Sheeta. I think that probably has something to do with it. So by all means, you have Bailey and Sasha. I get, okay, one, two, mm. right? Sheeta got to be at three. So you have, you have uh, Bailey, you have Oscar right now. You have Sheeta. Um, you have, and you have but Oscar Eo. hasn't Oscar hasn't been Oscar hasn't been booked as strongly as Sheeta has over from October no. last year till now. But I'm just saying, out of those four, if those were really your four main women's cha- well, Thunder Rosa too, if those were your five women's championships that are your main championships in the or, in any organization right now. Out of those, definitely Bailey's probably the biggest household name. So I can understand her being number one. Okay, I get um, it. You want to sell you want to sell all, articles, yeah, right? Oscar but too. Bailey, Bailey would Bailey would deserve to be number one given the year that she's had. Yeah. She's held the SmackDown women's title for over a year. Yeah. I know yeah I don't think okay. either one of us are arguing her spot right no, now. No. She's yes, one. To me, Sasha would be two because She's been in that run with Bailey, and they were both tag, and champs. they were tag team champs. Yeah, so I agree. I okay. think Sasha should be higher for sure. But to me, after that, given your six criteria, Sheeta should be Sheeta should be up there at number three. Yeah, I mean, where's where was Thunder Rosa? At? She was at fourteen. 14. Okay, yeah. So I mean, even but she, she jumped. Be she's jumped, but she but jumped from you, like ninety something. If you look from last year till now, I think she went from forty seven to fourteen or something like that. So like she yeah. completely jumped up to where. Fast forward a year from now, when the next women's issue comes out, she'll probably be higher. She will be in that top ten, top six. Yeah, I think you know if if everything holds up and she continues to do what she's done, mm. um, because her. You know, run now has been one of the best we've seen. I mean, she's been she's probably been the biggest workhorse outside of Sheeta, I think, in the women's division. I mean, God, a couple weeks ago, I think she had three fights in one week. I mean, yeah, so I mean, it's it's interesting to it's interesting to talk about. It's it's yeah. good discussion. It's good debate to yeah. have when these lists come out. Obviously, it's subjective, and you know, but if you're going to put a criteria on it then that takes the subjectivity out of it because mm-hmm. you're putting criteria on it. So I I would disagree with where they have Sheeta placed. Just be, you know, she's six overall. So your top five are WWE. She's, she's right there at six. But based off the criteria, I think she deserves to be in that top five above some of the women, mainly Becky and Charlotte, who've been off TV for yeah. the majority of this year. But I mean, at the end of the day, 
I mean, yeah, they only released the top five, you know, right away because they put the top five on the cover, but the top ten isn't a bad place to be. You know? No, it's not. So. But I, I just, like I said, I think if you want to keep AEW a strong, even though they're only a year old promotion, then to me, you got to have their women's champion in the top five. Yeah. Especially after the run that she's had this year. But then I'll, I'll agree with you as well with maybe Tessa should have been a little bit higher too. But Yeah, she mm. yeah, I mean, her circumstances were different and she was in Mexico and everything yeah. else and all that. So, like, if she doesn't get fired from Impact and actually comes back and defends the belt and goes on a run with it, then, like, I think that would bump her up a little bit mm-hmm. more, you know? Um but yeah, the, my only gripe on this list, looking at it now, is is Sheeta. I don't. Okay. I think she deserves to be in the top five, and I'd probably put her at, at three, no lower than four. And you know, they announced uh, PWI also announced a couple weeks ago that they're going to be doing a top fifty tag team list. So that I think is supposed to be coming First out. First time soon. ever. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll be having the same discussion in a couple weeks on seeing who they. Picking their top ten. Yep, and the men's issue will be released here soon as well, right? right. For for the year, so they put that out in November. I think so, and I'm not sure if the uh, no the men's issue already came out. Moxley was number one. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and I'm not sure if the tag team is going to be a special issue or if it'll just tie into something else. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see for that. A um, couple other little. Uh, news tidbits this week. No, go ahead. That's uh, go ahead. Um, the Thunderdome looks to have extended. Pat, it was supposed to end this month. Uh, looks I don't like they care. <laughs> looks like care. they extended that possibly through June or yeah. or through January. I'm I mean. over the Thunderdome. I don't so care. We'll have to see if anything happens with that. Uh, where that, they go next? It's not that special. <laughs> uh, do you remember Saturday Morning Slam from a few years ago? No. Uh, so a few years ago, WWE had on the CW called Saturday Morning Slam. It was a half hour, like kind of kids version of of WWE. Um, it kind of reminded me a lot of like whenever Superstars and All American Wrestling was on in the morning. Um, you know, it had one or two matches every week, and then a lot of it was like other segments. Um, they WWE really once again uh, registered a trademark for it, along with some of the names they had originally used in the show. Um, so not sure if they're just re-registering or if that's going to be planning on making a comeback. Um, the original was only one season. It ran from August 2012 to May 2013 and only had a total of 38 episodes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they bring it back or what goes on there. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of Ms. and Mrs., but that's returning. Uh, I've watched it here and there, but I don't, I don't follow it completely. They announced that's going to be coming back Thursday, November 12th. The only thing that I thought was a little newsworthy for that was that usually they had paired it with Raw or NXT in the past, and this time it's going to be on a Thursday night, you know, with no wrestling lead-in, so I thought that was kind of interesting that it's going to be a standalone show. Miz did say he's the face of USA. He is. And now he's back on Raw, so Mm -hmm. you can hype it up on there. And I think the the last item that I have for the week is uh, Dark Side of the Ring Season 3 was announced this week. Um... Reported topics are Grizzly Smith and Jake Roberts, Brian Pillman, and the one that I'm most interested in was uh, the WCW New Japan North Korea event. Yeah, um, Bischoff has talked about that uh, a couple times on okay. his podcast. So if you if you want to hear about that before the Dark Side of the Ring comes out, I would go through the archives on 83 weeks and and listen to him talk about that. Um, he was confirmed as one of the people that interviewed for for the dark episode. side of the ring episode so yeah those are those are great uh documentaries yeah um they they vice they do those they do those really well oh they, it's a great show they've had good good stories good episodes um so yeah from something that was just going to be a one-off to them now working on season three mm. um done really well so i'm, I'm really interested i think the, the unexpected passing of Brian Pillman will kind of be like how like the Eddie Guerrero, you yeah. know, Owen Hart um, was, and then Jake Roberts' story is one that is completely uh, mind blowing. Yeah, and 
if told right, it'll make you appreciate Jake Roberts a little bit more. Did you ever watch the uh, Jake Roberts documentary movie that was on like Amazon and Netflix for a bit? The one DD, DDP did, yeah. The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts. I did. Um, if you want more backstory on it, go listen to Bruce Pritchard, something to wrestle with podcast with okay. Conrad when they, they did the Jake Roberts episode. Okay. Um, I would go back and listen to that. That was Bruce really broke down everything um, that went into jake roberts and the way that he is and what he's dealt with which would lead into his issues that he's had fighting substance abuse and other things so i would definitely go check that out as well but i'm um, very excited for the return of dark side of the ring yeah and i mean i i didn't really hear too much on it because it's it's just one of those stories that i don't try to to follow as much anymore because it just seems like there's so many of them um Speaking of substance abuse issues, was that I guess Scott Hall was doing like something like a virtual fan event this past week, and they had to take him out because he wasn't doing well. And I don't know what the issue was. I don't know if you know it had anything to do with substance abuse or not. But um, I mean, he's another one, unfortunately. That especially whenever they did their the ESPN sixty on him, yeah, and that was that was an amazing episode as well. Um, unfortunately for those guys, their substance abuse abuse issues um, actually provide valid entertainment, you know, whenever they be, you know, it's not an easy life to have. No, no, it is something that for them and for anybody else, it's a, it's a day by day struggle. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if that is, if that did happen, hopefully, he, you know, gets back on the right track again and, and can kind of kick that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if he's still living with DDP or what's going on with that anymore, but you know, Hopefully, DDP can get him back on the right track. Absolutely. But that's all everything that I had for this week. you have anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, guys. It's been another edition of Bell to Bell.